lockdown 3.0. Pretty quiet out there tonight. Nothing much going on. I uh, guess it's going to be another quiet night in. Looking for something to fill the time. Don't know about you, but nowadays the only words that I seem to use about time are now, soon, or later. No, 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 hang on. No, I've five minutes to go. I'm not ready. I wanted to be on air. God, I didn't think it was that time to expect the alarm. Uh, hi, good, oh, sorry, hang on. Almost there, I'm so sorry to keep. Uh, uh, hi, good evening. Welcome to Domestic, our fourth domestic performance night. And we're here to fill the time for you to give you something that you wouldn't find on Netflix or on the BBC. Uh, a pop puri of performance, a smorgasbord of live art, uh, from music to drag to dance to spoken word to, well, accountancy. This is Domestic, and tonight we have seven artists with work made in their home for you to watch in your home live. Artists exploring what's on their mind and what's going on in the world right now. And if we go by the events of last week, there's quite a lot going on. So they're working in domestic settings using whatever they have to hand. There are some established artists, some emerging artists, but all of them have made work just for you. So we're really pleased you're here. Make yourself at home, enjoy. I do wanna say that these performances deal with adult themes and some people might find those disturbing. If you want to review specific content warnings, then please go to the link in the chat right now. Um, my domestic space, although it's zhuzhed up a bit this evening, I thought I'd make an effort, wear the suit tonight, get a bit of gold lame going on. <laughs> Um, although it's used up, it is a domestic space and it's in London. But for our first performance, we're going to go over to Manchester, to Wally Range, in fact, where Void Dance are waiting for us. And Void Dance's work brings together dance and video, body and sight. And this piece is called Underneath the Frying Pan. Julia Griffin became a carer for her dad, Ken, during lockdown 1.0. She continues to be his carer with all the issues, joys, and sometimes rage that that brings with it. Julia is waiting for us right now by the family table.
know that's it. That was Julia Griffin with Underneath the Frying Pan. And Julia was working through body and through movement. By contrast now, we're going to see a piece by Lois Soleil. And she works with the body and the voice, with rawness and autobiographical directness. In Between the Lines, You Are a Poem is performed by a Zoom chorus of Lois's. It's a, a self-portrait, a love poem. It is, if you like, a kind of magic. There is magic in your subtitles, in between the lines you're a poem, in the way you hold eye contact and extend it, the way you pull back gently and come back and you smile. It reminds me I am grounded to the earth below the cement, lift off the veil of social falsity created by the dread of being naked be oneself and how much easier it is to imitate a life than to inhabit your own. And in this conversation, I crumble myself home kindly, guided by the spells inside you. Reminds me, reminds me, weaving into comfortable silences with another. Reminds me, galvanized creation, exchanges of playfulness and out of the cat dreams. Remind, Remind me, me to welcome home the bond we had and the, the past, past we cannot enclose into verbal language or even retrace. Remind, Remind me to create my own language of riddles with you and trust, and trust the understanding that, that lies among spoken. There are shadows inside, there are shadows inside you. In an endearing, non-suppressed non rawness, rawness you do not shame away into a coffin and gift to Pandora. It stands there. It stands there. Still. Still. Like a, like, a large, body like a large body of water, I cannot see where it has begun and where it might end. Sometimes, Sometimes I insecurely I miss you before you have even gone. Forget, forget the riddles, push the, riddles, push the water, act surprised, act surprised when it comes back splashing in my face. Remind myself, Remind myself I, have I have been here before, before seen, seen this with another. With another. Forget, forget patterns, patterns. Forget, forget this does not get me more, it gets me less. less. Expect the boomerang to always come home, but sometimes it is tired, sometimes it does not want to, sometimes it doesn't care enough to. Because the boomerang makes no promises, no, the boomerang never promised. And you say, maybe that's why I threw it in the air to begin with. Thank you to Lois and Lois and Lois Soleil. And all of the Loises were coming to you from Brussels in Belgium. But our next artist is coming from you. From you have to screw up your lines at least once every show. I just did it. Let's try again. But our next artist is coming to you from Oxford here in the UK. And I'm not going to say anything about Brexit, nothing at all. Um, Mireille Sidham had not planned to be in Oxford, but that's where lockdown caught her. And Mireille also works with spoken word, like Louise, Lois, um, but she combines it with video and soundscapes. And this piece is about bread, our daily bread, a daily staple, something we take for granted, the bread we break. Drawing on her Egyptian heritage, Mireille invokes the role of bread in Egypt's history of political uprising and recalls frank conversations with her mother. A hand, a hand working, moving, kneading dough, working hand. العيش بالنسبة لنا حاجة مهمة جدا في مصر العيش هو حياة الإنسان. فزي ما المية يقولوا مصر هبة النيل يعني المية هي اللي أوجدت البلد العيش بالنسبة لنا حاجة مهمة جدا. You tell me bread is life, like the water of the Nile that Egypt was built upon. 
لان العيش هو العنصر الاساسي في الاكل للشخص المصري عيش ان عشرة bread and life bound in language it's the connection between people when you say there's bread and salt between them اول ما بنتكلم عن العيش بفكر في معنى الحياه بفكر في انه لما بنروح الكنيسه هو ده الخبز الحياه اللي بناخده هناك فالعيش بالنسبه لي حاجه مهمه جدا You say as soon as you think about bread, you think about life and the bread of life you have at church. Strengthening the bond between you and your faith with the body of Christ. A ritual which nourishes you spiritually, reaffirming your belief. And I want to ask you what the difference is between my daily bread and your holy bread. and the bread that lies between the two. At what point does bread become sacred, transformed into emancipated flesh, when it's stamped with crosses and blessed in mass? But I let you go on. The Muslim person, 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 the Muslim You tell me how a lot of Egyptian people live in poverty. And for them, bread is the main form of nutrition. That's why during the revolution, people chanted bread, freedom, social justice. I enter, eyes closed, music in my ears. Strings reverberate like humming bees buzzing on drum skin. Freshly baked bread and decaying waste penetrate my nostrils and poke at my brain, nudging memories out of crevices. The bin men are on strike, again. It's warm. So warm, my feet swell and shoes shrink. The air feels heavy with quiet disruptions. I open my eyes to outstretched hands waving goodbye, beckoning into taxis, exclaiming at the sky. Nicotine stained and weathered with age, hands begging for change. The smog filters the scenery. Layered skylines multiply and fade into infinity. Three peaks break the symmetry. A symphony of beeps and screeching moped wheels. A disembodied voice cries, God is good. Then another. And another. Overlapping into incoherence. Rhythm over meaning, calling, calling. The الموضوع مش أبيض وسود. أها فلوس كتيرة قوي قوي. يا إما معهاش حاجة خالص. الحكومة دلوقتي ابتدت تبص للناس اللي معهاش حاجة عشان دي كانت سبب الثورة من الأول. إن في ناس الحكومة بتتجاهلهم تماما. كأنهم مش موجودين وده هيحل مشكلتهم طبعا كانت المشكلة الأساسية أنه مع... يعني في ناس كتيرة قوي تح... تحت خط الفقر فقر فقر رهيب والحكومة مش دريانة بيهم فبقى في كميات من الناس شايفة أن في وأنه ما ينفعش الناس تستنى كده That was the bread we break by Mireille Sitton, exploring what is supposedly women's work and her heritage. Avital Raz is a musician, 
and performance maker of Jewish heritage. And the seed of her piece is a 10th century rabbi's decree that a woman's voice is her nakedness. And what he's trying to say there is that to have a woman's voice heard is as shocking as if she were to walk into a room naked. And that decree caused thousands of women over eons to be silenced. So Avital's piece, she's looking for a woman's voice by distorting and sampling her own. And she's confronting the effects of men's teachings about women on women. A woman's voice is her nakedness. Kol ba'isha erva. Kol voice. Ba'isha in the woman. Erva nakedness. A rabbi in the 10th century decreed it. And so, a woman's voice is her nakedness means hearing a woman's voice is akin to seeing her exposed naked body. And the Hebrew word erva made its way into Arabic, turned into aura, which means private parts that should be hidden. A woman's private parts are vulnerable to attack. So the word also came to mean vulnerable, weak spots. And that Arabic aura made its way into Hindi and Urdu as aurat, which simply means woman. But I digress. According to the rabbis, a virtuous woman covers her skin, covers her hair, and never sings in front of men. All these are saved for her husband. Sometime, a very, very long time ago, when someone was hand copying a manuscript from ancient Greek back into Hebrew, possibly a little mistake occurred. Kvoda shel bat melech, the honor of the daughter of a king, inwards. comes in the context of a list of gemstones. The honor of the daughter of a king is rubies. The honor of the daughter of a king is sapphires. The honor of the daughter of a king is inwards. But the Hebrew word for inwards, pnima, looks and sounds a lot like the Hebrew word Pnina, pearl. But 2,000 years later, it stands. An honorable woman covers her body, doesn't speak up, doesn't flaunt her knowledge around men. Oh, 
joint I had built for my Barbie dolls. I tore some photos out of my dad's penthouse magazine. He didn't miss them. And I pasted them onto the inner walls of a cardboard box. Barbies would fluctuate between feeling exploited and humiliated and owning their own sexuality and exhibitionism. I always wondered how I knew about these things at such a young age. sacred. Death is unclean. When a woman bleeds every month, it is the absence of life. Life is sacred. When a woman bleeds every month, she carries around with her the stench of death. She cannot be touched, not even by her husband, not even on the cheek, not even to hold her hand. After she is done bleeding, she will bathe in holy water and be purified. Then she can be touched again. to do was undress them. My Barbies didn't bleed. They didn't even have a hole between their legs. Only smooth, firm, plastic. They were always smiling. Even when you rip their heads off, they'd still be smiling. Despite their immodesty, they couldn't be raped. There was nowhere to put it. My Barbies didn't bleed. 
they didn't get pregnant, and they most certainly didn't miscarry. In fact, all they had to teach me about womanhood at five or maybe six years old was about dressing and undressing. is her nakedness. After I lost the baby, I had a very strange dream. I was naked and wet, all covered in blood. I opened my legs, and a very special light came from deep within me. I was self-luminous, like a self-luminescent coral in the depths of the ocean. My legs wide and my nakedness began to sing. That was the self luminescent Avital Raz with A Woman's Voice Is Her Nakedness. And Avital was coming to us from Sheffield. And I used to go to Sheffield a lot. Uh, and one of the things that fascinated me about Sheffield was that just like ancient Rome, it's built on seven hills. Now, I would like to imagine that Avital was on the top of one of those hills and not the next hill, but the hill after this. That's where we're going to find Alice Connolly, also in Sheffield. Alice is locked down in her house with a pocket full of love letters that people have sent to others during this year of lockdowns. She wants to share them with you and use them to give all of us and all of the ones that you love a virtual hug. If there's someone you wish that you could hug right now, just pop their name in the chat. Hi, Auntie Mary and Uncle John. I hope both of you and Roxy are looking after yourselves and Mark when he's around. Marathoning Harry Potter just isn't the same by oneself. What film series shall we marathon next, Auntie Mary? Hey, Uncle John, maybe you can play with those trains now instead of selling them. If you get bored of baking bread or watching TV. These really are trying times. But anyway, I am sure you both have the spirit and good vibrations to pull through. You take care now.
from Harry Marciniak. Dear Uncle Michael, it was really good to catch up with you on Christmas Day, but I don't like the thought of having to leave you on your own. At least we can still chat over Skype, maybe over a pint or two. I guess I'll have to buy my own lager this time. Take care, and I hope to see you soon. And... Antonika Arbett. Dear precious Nana, I feel so guilty for always being too busy to come and see you. Intend to visit tomorrow, but then tomorrow becomes a busy day too. You deserve better. You were never too busy for me. Always generous with your time, always there. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I realise what I've done. And when this is all over, I'll be there for you, Nana. I love you now and always. Eve. From Eve Curran. Hey, I know we've been a bit quiet for a while. The gaps between the messages have got longer. But I just wanted to let you know I'm still here. I still want to know how you are. I don't like the idea of you by yourself alone with your thoughts. I love you. Speak to you soon. Jake. From Jacob Jackson. Catherine. Hello, Missus. Who would have thought at the beginning of the year we would now be having to spend it apart? I may not be able to hold you, but seeing you through the window brings me such joy. Though not as much as your biscuits brings the nurses, eh? <laughs> Just know, you give me strength, and soon I'll have my hug, and more importantly, one of your biscuits, always.
David. From David Galloway.
that was Hugs in My Pockets by Alice Connolly. Uh, and by you. Thank you for sharing the names of your loved ones with us through the chat. For our second to last piece, we're going to head back to Manchester, where we started the evening. And we would like you to be aware that this piece does contain flashing imagery. Mitzi is performing the artist. My body as a canvas and my life experience as the paint. Transformation, the queer body, beauty, celebrity, a hall of mirrors. Witness, Mitzi. Reality, queer, experience. Queer, reality, experience. Experience, reality, queer. Reality, Experience queer. Queer experience reality. Experience queer reality. Experience queer illusions. Create queer illusions. Illusions create queer. Experience queer illusions. Queer create illusions. Experience queer. Reality Experience Queer Reality Experience Queer Reality When I look back at my life, it's not that I don't want to see things exactly as they happened. It's just that I prefer to remember them in an artistic way. And truthfully, the lie of it all is much more honest because I invented it. Clinical psychology tells us arguably that trauma is the ultimate killer. Memories are not recycled like atoms and particles in quantum physics, but they can be lost forever. It's sort of like my past is an unfinished painting. And as the artist of that painting, I must fill in all the ugly holes and make it beautiful again. It's not that I've been dishonest. It's just that I loathe reality. I loathe reality. I loathe reality. I loathe reality. I loathe reality.
as an artist, my body as a canvas, and my life experiences as the paint. Each fine brushstroke has its own story to tell. A story about fame, a story about celebrity, about gender, self-expression, and art. Here, my beautiful queer body stands proud, right here, right now, in the safe space I have created for me, my utopia, that I invite you to share with me. Enjoy the intensity of the lights as they mutate my body. Endure the beating pulse of sound pushing through your ears. Listen for the beat. I am here. But I am also there. I am a man. I am a woman. I am a body. I am a face. I am proud and I am loud. But I am not. It's not that I've been dishonest. It's just that I loathe reality. Mincy was performed by Mark Powell with sound by Murray Jameson. Now, I don't know about you, but around this time of night, I like a glass of wine and a pickled onion. And I like to think about what's, uh, what I've got coming up in the next few weeks. So today is the 13th of January which means that in 18 days, all of us need to get our tax returns in. Now, personally, I'm always last minute, and I know that drives my accountant absolutely mad. Now, I don't know if that's the reason, but my accountant has recently moved from their nice seafront office in Gravesend to a bunker somewhere in Yorkshire. Oh, damn it, all of these creative types and artists leaving their goddamn tax returns to the last second. It's driving me insane. You know, why does everybody leave it to the last minute? You know, it's such a cruel world. So much so, I felt the need to retreat to this bunker. Down here, I've been busy going over all of the books. Now, not just the accounts, but all of these doomsday books as well, including pretty much every religious text, survival guides, climate manifestos, and even the complete works of David Icke. You know, I want to account for everything. 
as a result of my diligent bookkeeping, I've come up with my own Rapture Index system so that we can get the end of days accounts in order. I'm standing at the ledge of the world, some might say. So on my ledger, I have 40 budget headings, all in alphabetical order. Each one of them is a signifier of the apocalypse. So I now need you to give me a figure from one to 10 for each of them. So one signifies, that's not an issue. I haven't really seen much of that. And 10 signifies, ah, no, Megan, stop, it's happening all the time, it's everywhere. I'll then be able to know what the balance sheet is looking like, letting us know how long we have before all of our asses, no, sorry, all of our assets are liquidated. Pedro, are you here? Uh, yes, yeah, God, can I'm I help accountants? I'm always late, these artists. Right. So what I'm going to need is you to help me out right now. Is that okay? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. So what's going to happen is I'm going to read out each of my budget headings and I want everybody okay. in the chat to give it a figure from one to ten for each one. Okay. One, they haven't seen much. Ten, loads. I'm going to need you to do maybe some quick maths, some mental arithmetic and get a figure back to me. Is that okay? Uh, I can certainly make it look as if I'm doing some quick maths and just kind of invent a number, yeah. Perfect. We got that all together. Everyone understand? Let, let me just check. So yeah. if there's a lot of it about, it's 9, 10. If there's not yeah. much of it, it's 1, 2. And if it's kind of middling, it's, you know, 4, 5, 6. Yeah? Yeah. Perfect spot on. Are you Fantastic. ready to go? You know the signs yeah. of time are running out? Yeah, and I know your time costs a lot of money, so I'm going to try and move through this. Okay, then let's get fiscal. Okay. So, number one, anti-Semitism. Chat, have you got anything for me? Oh, I've got a nine, a nine, a four, a six, a nine, an eight, a five. Um, I'm going to call it an average of seven. Seven. Blind eyes and hard hearts. Oh, we're extremes, we're twos and tens. I'm, I'm going to sit on the fence and go five. Five. Boasters, scoffers, mockers and revilers. Oh, no, I know that. It's ten. Ten. Brutal men. Yeah, uh, also ten. Yes, lots of tens in the chat. Busyness and rushing to and fro. Uh, ten, two, five, let's call it nine. Nine. Catch the society, all that tapping to peer. Again, we're extremes, two, tens and twos. Um, let's call it eight. Eight. Confusion and perplexity of nations. I've got a what on that. Uh, oh, no, it seems, it seems quite strong. Uh, let's call it a, a, a nine again. A nine. Convergence of signs. So everything coming together. I've got 111 for that. <laughs> One um, to ten. Um, nine. Days of Lot, otherwise known as Vexed Souls. See many of them? I've got three sixes here. Six, six, six. Well, that's a sign, isn't it? It six. is, yes. Days of Noah or genetic manipulation? That's quite low. One, two, naught. Let's, let's call it two. Two. Delusional thinking. Delusional thinking. Yeah, solid ten. Solid ten. Not mentioning anybody in particular. Demonic activity. Oh, actually, I can answer that because I'm just speaking for my area. I would go nine. Nine. Diseases, plagues and pestilence. Have we had any of that this year? Solid ten. Yeah, ten, 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 ten. Yeah. Earthquakes. Zero. I've got a zero, a one, a four, a three, a two. Let's call it two. Two's a good Very number. low on the murmurs there. Economic yeah. instability. Oh, the ten. Yeah, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Very good. Extreme weather. 10. 
false teachers, false doctrine with itchy ears. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what are you getting at? What are you saying? Hey? Um, I need a number, check, we've got, oh, oh, we've got it, it looks like 10 again. Everybody's ten. just going 10 crazy. Famine. Nine. I'm just shocked at those food banks at the moment. Nine. We've got nine. nine. We've got nine. False religions and cults. Is TikTok a cult? I think it is, and I've got tens again. Greed. Oh, ten. Ten. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Idolatry. Oh, we're extremes. Ones, tens, fives, twos. Uh, uh, four. Four. Increase in prophetic knowledge. And I've got a lot of one, one, ones again. But you're not going to accept that. Okay, let's no. call it three. One, one, one is three. three. Okay. The Jerusalem Israel turmoil. Uh, question marks. Ten, five, nine, uh, ten, ten. Uh, ten. Yeah. Ten, ten. Lawlessness. Ten. Lovers of self and narcissists, or otherwise known as Instagram influencers. <laughs> Ten. Mass animal deaths. Uh, 101. No, 10. 111. 111 is very popular. Uh, 11. Quick mass. 11. Not Tr having it. Sorry, we we'll won't be after 10, it. 10, 10, 10. Sorry, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to represent Masonic the chat. I'm the voice activity. of the chat. 10. Masonic activity. 10. 10. Again, nation against nation. Ten. Nationalism. Seven. New Age religions. Gwyneth Paltrow and a goop and a jade eggs. Eight. I am just picking numbers at random now. There are so many. Occult and New World Order symbolism. Ten. Persecution. 10. 45. Um, 10. Racism. 10. Satanism. 10. Signs in the heavens. Yeah, I think about nine at the moment, looking outside. I haven't yeah, nine. seen the sky up in a while. I've been so deep underground. <laughs> Speculative timelines converging. Uh, yes, lots of science fiction programmes on Netflix. Yes, ten. Yeah. Syria or the destruction of Damascus. Tens. We're ten. into ten territory now. <laughs> Violent protests. We're running out of time. Violent protests. Ten. Ten if we're running out of time. Ten. A thousand. Volcanoes. Volcanoes? Yeah. Uh, two. Two. We've got lots of twos. And wars and rumours of wars. A uh, ten. I'm sorry if I'm not representing you properly, chat. I'm doing okay. my best. Let's have a look where we're standing. So, out of a possible 400 out of our budget, so we have a budget of 400 and we've spent 319 credits, leaving only 81 left. So, everyone, we have two options now. This is the only advice I can give you as an accountant. It's spend them wisely before all of our asses this time not assets are liquidated in a blaze of hellfire. Or, you know, you can maybe take the budget into your own hands and get out of the red. Oh, looks like our time has run out. I always depre depreciate our time together, you know, Pedder, but I don't think you can afford me for another 10 minutes unless me, you want to pay me again to get your accounts in order? No, no, no. All right, then see you later. I'm safe down here in my bunker. Have fun going up in a blaze of hellfire. I'm, I'm, I'm really confused. Are we, are we close to the... I don't know. I don't know. And what, what's really strange was that I hadn't noticed until just now how much my accountant looks like... A, what's her name? 
um, artist, Lydia Cultural, yeah. Almost identical, apart from the black eyes. Uh, and I haven't seen Lydia for a while, but I know that she's been doing lots of research around eschatology, which is the moment at the end of the world, and around uh, doomsday preppers, people that sort of lay down supplies because they think the end of the world is coming. Yeah, I mean, that could almost have been a piece made by Lydia. Very strange, very strange. And that's about it for another domestic. We'll be back in a month or so. And if you're an artist and you'd like to show work here, uh, we have a running application process. So please do get in touch. If you look in the credits at the end, you'll see a slide that will give you the details of how to contact us and how to apply. If you want to have a chat with tonight's artists, we'll be opening up the chat window for everybody in a moment. So do stick around with us for a bit. Um, if you've got a, a drink, you can share it with us during the, the chat. Um, thank you. Thank you to our outstanding artists from this evening. Thank you to Word of Warning for organising this fourth domestic. I'm Peter Kirk. I've been your host for this evening. And our final and most important thank you is to you for being with us because we made this for you. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time.